Yellowstone's full of wildlife. In addition to being able to see geysers and some of the amazing geology here, people do truly come for the wildlife. It's hard to see a bear. You're pretty fortunate to see a wolf, but you're barely guaranteed to see a bison. It would be a rare visit to Yellowstone to come and spend a day in the park and not see a bison. You can not only see what a bison looks like, you can watch it move on the landscape. You can listen to it bellow. You can see how it interacts with other bison. At Yellowstone, we've preserved the most important wild bison population in the whole United States, partly because so few locations have bison without fences. There are huge, huge plains here in Yellowstone, and uh, Lamar Valley is one of them. It's you know, five or six miles long and a mile wide. There can be days where there's two or 3,000 animals in the valley bottom, and in a matter of four or five hours, they can all disappear. They walk wherever they want. There are no fences. There's not even a fence around the exterior of the park to keep them in. They're always on the move, just eating and walking, eating and walking. The males aren't always with the large herds, and there's usually an older female that might be kind of the leader of a herd. They are amazing in their ability to survive and adapt to such a harsh climate here. We get a lot of snow in Yellowstone, but they have a large hump on their back, and there's bone and muscle in that hump. It allows them to dip their head, their huge head, down into the snow completely and just snow plow the snow out of the way to get to the grass. They begin to break up into smaller groups. They'll be distributed around the hot spring basins, and they use those areas with limited amount of snow for access to food. During the springtime, there's a time of renewal, and we have visitors just flock to the park to watch the bison during the calving season. Nearly all of the females get pregnant each summer, so there's an extremely high percentage of females having calves during April and May. I was fortunate enough to see a bison give birth to a calf on Mother's Day one year. It was amazing to watch not just the birth, but to watch the calf after the birth. Within about 40 minutes, it was standing and walking. Compare that to a human child, it takes us about a year to learn to walk. It's pretty amazing, but they need to be able to get up and run with the herds and move around. Into the summer when things are green and lush, it's kind of the prime time for bison. They're moving around and eating, and a lot of visitors get to see vast herds of them, thousands of them. We're fortunate to be able to support such a large, healthy herd. I think that bison are very emblematic of the wilderness. There was nothing but wilderness when the Native American tribes were spread out across North America. And bison were a dominant feature of that landscape. The animal was so important to many, many Plains tribes. This particular animal provided so much of what they needed. The meat, obviously, the fur and the hide could be used for clothing and blankets and teepee coverings. Everything was useful. It was kind of like a storehouse or a department store right in the one animal. From a time period when there were 30 million animals on the landscape, the United States was pioneering into the western frontier. So the military strategy was to take away the food, which was the bison, and conquer the Indian nations. They harvested bison by the hundreds of thousands. Then an industry grew up around that. The bone was ground up to make fertilizer for the farmers occupying the Great Plains. And so to see their numbers dwindle so low, 
It was a direct reflection and an intentional act to try to eradicate both the bison and the people. So many were killed, and we believe only about 23 or 24 animals were left in Yellowstone. 24 is not very many when you consider the vast herds that were before that. As humans, I think we played a role in that, certainly in their almost extinction, but also in kind of turning that around. It truly is a conservation success story that we were able to keep them from going extinct. And I think we're lucky to be able to watch them on the landscape today. You know, if we'd lost wild bison on the landscape, we would have lost a very stoic and emblematic symbol of the great Western states. Because we were able to save them from extinction, they're a symbol of how far we've come as humans. Our own ability to share the landscape with another species and to see that not everything has to serve our own purposes. There aren't as many places anymore where you can have bears or wolves or herds of bison.